The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. The Ocean, Chapter One. Our story begins on the ocean with wind and rain and thunder and lightning and waves. A hurricane roared and raged through the night. In the middle of the chaos, a cargo ship was sinking. Down, down, down to the ocean floor. The ship left hundreds of crates floating on the surface. But as the hurricane thrashed and swirled and knocked them around, the crates also began sinking into the depths. One after the other, they were swallowed up by the waves until only five crates remained. By morning, the hurricane was gone. There were no clouds, no ships, no land in sight. There was only a calm water and clear skies and those five crates lazily bobbing along the ocean current. Days passed and then a smudge of green appeared in the horizon. As the crates drifted closer, soft green shapes slowly sharpened into the hard edges of the wild rocky island. The first crate rode to shore on a a tumbling, rumbling wave, and then crashed against the rocks with such force that the whole thing burst apart. Now, reader, when I, what I haven't mentioned is that tightly packed inside each crate was a brand new robot. The cargo ship had been transported hundreds, hundreds of them before it swept up in the storm. Now only five robots were left. Actually, only four were left because... When the first crate crashed into the rocks, the robot inside shattered to pieces. The same thing happened with the next crate. It crashed against the rocks, and the robot parts flew everywhere. Then it happened to the next crate, and then the next crate, robot limbs and torsos were flung on the ledges. A robot head splashed into the tide pool. A robot foot skittered into the waves. And then came the last crate. It followed the same path as the others, but instead of crashing against the rocks, it sloshed against the remains of the first four crates. Soon, as more were give, heaving up out of the water, it soared through the air, spinning and glistening until it slammed down onto a tall shelf of the rock. The crate was cracked and crumpled, but the robot inside was safe. Chapter 2. The Otters the island's north shore had become something of a robot grave site. Scattered across the rocks were broken bodies of four dead robots. They sparkled in the early morning light, and their sparkles caught the attention of some very curious creatures. A gang of sea otters was romping through the shallows when one of them noticed the sparkling object. The otters all froze. They raised their noses to the wind, but they smelled only the sea. So they cautiously crept up over the rocks to take a closer look. The gang slowly approached a robot torso. The biggest otter stuck his paw, swatting the heavy thing, and quickly jumped back. But nothing happened, so they wiggled over to the robot hand. Another brave otter stuck, stuck its paw out and flipped the hand over. It made a lovely clinking sound on the rocks, and the otter squealed with delight. They spread out and played with the robot arms and legs and feet. More hands were flipped. One of the otters discovered a robot head in the tide pool, and they all dove and took turns rolling along it along the bottom. And then they spotted something else. Overlooking the grave site was one surviving crate. Its sides were scraped and dented, and wide gash ran across its top. The otter scampered up the rocks and climbed into the big box. Ten furry faces poked through the gash, eager to see what's inside. When they saw was another brand of new robot, but this robot was different from the others. It was still in one piece. It was surrounded by spongy packing foam. The otters quickly, re the rotters reached through the gash and tore at the foam. It was soft and squishy. They squeaked as they snatched the fluffy stuff, shreds of it floated away on the sea breeze. And in all that excitement, one of their paws accidentally snapped an important little button at the back of the robot's head. Click. It took a while for the otters to realize that something was happening inside the crate. But a moment later, they heard it, a low whirling sound, and everyone stopped and stared. Then the robot opened her eyes. 